In this video, we're going to be looking at indices. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you to look at here. Now, one of them is to do with indices and one of them is not. Of course, they're both still very important. Okay, looking at the first one, we've got x plus x plus x. Now, you should know what that does. And I'll give you a chance to say it. And you should have said 3x, 3 lots of x. So whenever you see something like this, 3x, it just means 3 times x. Now have a look at the next one. This one is to do with indices. Now just in case you already knew it, I'll give you a chance to say the answer. And you should have said x to the power of 3. x to the power of 3 just means x times x times x. And this is what we're going to be talking about in this video. Okay, so let's look at the one on the left. This time we've got x times x times x times x. So it's very similar to before, but this time it's not going to be x to the power of 3. It's going to be x to the power of 4. Now the next one might be a little bit tricky. You've got x to the power of 2, or you can say x squared, times x. Now what does x to the power of 2 mean? x to the power of 2 means x times x. So what you've really got is x times x times another x. And of course, that will be x to the power of 3. Now, I want you to start thinking about a rule for the one on the right. Notice you've got x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 1. When there's no power there, it just means x to the power of 1. Now, if you couldn't think of a rule, I'm going to show it to you now. It's this one here. I got x to the power of an apple times x to the power of a banana and it equates to x to the power of the sum of the two things. I just thought this would be a healthy way to show you how to do indices. So remember this rule because we're going to use it a lot in maths. Okay, so let's try it out on these questions here. I've got x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5. Now, it is perfectly that scenario we were doing earlier, so you're going to simply add the powers. And you get x to the power of 9. Let's try the next one. Now, we've been doing with x, but it makes no difference using the letter y. So don't be confused with that. So go ahead and add those powers. And you get y to the power of 8. Okay, so the next one looks a little bit tricky. Now, when you see this x and this y next to each other. There's nothing between them. And what does that mean? It just means times. So you've got a whole load of things timesing each other. And you should know when you're timesing, the order does not matter. So you can do it in any order you like. So let's do the x's first. So we've got x to the power 3 times x to the power 2. And you should be able to say that's x to the power 5. And you've got y to the power 4 times y to the power 5. And of course, that's y to the power of 9. It's not too tricky. And you leave the answer like this, with no signs between the x and the y. Okay, so we're going to try another very tricky one. It's got big numbers multiplying on them as well. And it's not very different to the one we just did. You simply also times the two numbers. So here we've got 3 times 4, and that should just give you 12. And with the rest of it, we'll do what we've been practicing, just adding the powers. Now, I'll give you a moment to think about this one. Now, x's powers are 3, and the other x has no power. But you should remember, like I said earlier, that means power 1. So the new power will be 3 plus 1, 4. And with y, you've got power 2 and power 5. And if you add those, you should get y to power 7. And there it is, 3 times 4 gave us 12, and the powers were simply the sum of the powers from the question. Now here we've got dividing. Whenever you have it as a fraction like this, all it means is they're dividing each other. And when you're dividing, instead of adding the powers, you subtract them. So we've got x to the power of apple divided by x to the power of banana. And of course that equated to x to the power of the apple minus the banana. All these apples and bananas are making me feel really healthy. Three more fruits and I'll have my five a day. Now, up till now, we've been adding powers. Now we're going to be looking at situations where we times powers. 
Now it's these situations here where we end up times in powers. So here we've got x to the power 3 and all of that is to the power of 5. So we times the powers. It's going to be x to the power of 15. So let's try the next one. Again, we have that same situation. We've got the brackets and a power outside the brackets. So again, we times the powers. So if you want to pause the video and have a go yourself, go for it. Okay, so the two times the three gives us six. So the x's power is now going to be six. And the four times three gives us 12. So y's power is going to be 12. Okay, so the next one's a little bit more trickier. So we know it's a situation where we times the powers. However, we've got a four in there. And the four doesn't seem to have a power. But yes, it does have a power. The power is just simply one. So one times the outside power, one times three is three. So four's power is going to be three. And x is power seven, seven times three is 21. So x is power is going to be 21. And y's power is going to be six. Two times three is six. Okay, so we're nearly done. We just don't want to leave it as four to power three. And you should be able to work out four to power three in your head. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4 gives us 64. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.